Thank you, Oz. Yes, we would. And today we're going to talk about Kansas traditional fiery chili. The buzzword term traditional fiery fried chili. It's going to match that fiery chili that Mr. Potato Head has. Oh, look, my dog. And Mr. Potato Head is here. So, check it out. Kansas is just the word. <laughs> this is square. This is like, if you zoom out, it's really small. That's square. It's really small. You can't really fit in it. It's actually more heavy for you if you're standing in your computer screen, your computer, or your iPhone in your iPhone. And the more that, the fact you've got to zoom back. You have a completely different lens. But for the most part, you need one that's literally a two foot wide. Why is it important for your browser? Well, the Kansas has some powerful keywords. Number one, you can paint just about anything you can imagine. You can insert your shirt. You can paint as many pictures on top as you can. You can paint any way you want on it. As long as it's just your shirt. And it's really, really good for doing your chart work. So when you open it up in data frame, it's only the last of those two keywords. You can put them all in one square. And it means one word. You get into browsing, you get a lot better hard work that way. And you can just paint whatever you want. But this you need to eventually kind of really standardize. So you've got as long as you want. You get used to it. So we're going to talk about four basic keywords. When you're drawing squares or squares or you know, text or whatever, anything. That are a lot more easy to shadow and easy to render and easy to model. But anyway, let's go ahead and show you the four basic words that show up. And today, we're going to utilize this term on a show that I'm proud of. And there's this phenomenal relationship between these guys that we've got. So today we're going to take our first step in talking to what we together like to call the internet. So we're taking Kansas and some of our friends and following our activity that we've got here. Now you can create a term just like you've got anything else. You can create it by just taking a look and saying, where are the Kansas churches? Which is one of those classic ones that has no doubt that you've got Kansas City in there. And it's just pretty benign. It doesn't hit you like a ton of different things. So let's make the first Kansas text. So we're in the body, the body is pretty much what we say is Kansas text. This is the name on your browser, the Kansas Church Tab. This is the Kansas Church Tab. And we call it the Kansas Tab. Now, some tabs have attributes. And those are your key attributes down at the top. So you can log in there. So we could also do that. We could, instead of doing our first name, we got first name logged in there. We could do our first and second name. So we could say, Mr. Potato Head here. Okay. But that is the same exact way as when you browse the body of Kansas City. But Kansas is going to be explained to you in a little bit more detail. Say Arcadia. So let's do the same thing. Arcadia. So we're going to get an ID. What is an ID? An ID is a name. It's almost like a variable name. But that's what it is. We're going to use this name to establish and say, hey, we are the same. We have the same name. Are you from this area? 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 So we're going to give it a name. Our first variable. Might not be your first variable. You never know. Could be somebody else's. And we're going to go with the text that we have. Look at this thing. Now, zoomed out a little more than I'd like to, so we're going to click on her. And open source. Or just whoever you want to do it with. But you can do it with anybody. Cool. So we have our first name there. Let's um, let's go get a reference to that guy. So how do you get a reference to that guy? Well, there is another global object I haven't talked about. We've talked about window. And there's plenty of Joe and John's. If you've heard about them, you know you're not going to hear about them because they're not here. There's another one called Documents. Documents is a representation of Windows. So what does that mean? What makes a window a document? Well, a window is the code of Windows. Windows. Document's got the thing inside of it, so it does the web page actions as well. Okay. So document actions, you hover over it, and it actually highlights the things that are in it. So you can have got quite multiple documents that you can use. So you can have like, here's our document structure, and you can just basically just walk the tree of relations within the tree of relations that you have here. If you hover over parts, it highlights the layers, and so you've got things here. It's not the same as a window. So we've got our canvas. How do we get access to it in the first place? Well, you're going to browse it. You've got everything inside of it. So we're going to say our first name. Our variable can be different. It can be I. It can be Mr. It can be our first name. It can be Mr. Potato Head. It can be Mr. Potato Head. Equals document. And document has a function that has a few attributes to the document. You can define these as a global object that is anywhere similar to Windows that you can use. In fact, guess what? Windows uh, Paint. First thing equals document type. Pick element by element. So you hit right and right click to pick out the particular thing that you want to pick. So we're going to pick the chicken salad right here. Now our ID is hey, give it a host tag. You can find this middle of the green thing 
hard for us to tell. I think that intro is really cool because it's like an ASMR intro. It's hard to tell who you are. Who you really are is like who you are. This song feels very like I don't know if you'll find it in your life or not. I think you'll die from it. I don't know. But who knows? Maybe that. So cool. You got it. And as you can see, it turns out that he had a very very that look but a piercing that's like a knife that extends out of his back. Which is John says the doc doctor is fighting for his soul. Doctor? Doctor? That's the concept of like your mind is like fighting for your soul. Right? So we have our first panel. Pretty cool. There's nothing wrong with the first panel. It's just like you asked. There are two ways to refer to him. At least that's the way the panel is going to be. He's got a gun. He's shooting at somebody else. He's Forget that when he's angry and you can hear him saying the most iconic phrase of all time, which is he scores it, right? So we're going to get a reference to shooting at somebody else, and you hear shooting at the drama, right? Which is just some level of like real B-roll. We're going to get our first panel. This is the the key moment. Our first panel. Doc. And as you can see with the panel, look at this. It's just like that. It's like all we care about is getting shot. This is Neil Young Panel, and he's just having a good time. Tell Michael, tell Duncan that I want that piece of cake. Okay, cool. This is it. Full sell at the bottom. And it says contact at full rep. And you'll notice rep is a very common word used in a lot of panels these days. It's a term for contractedness, contractedness of rep people. So rep, rep people, things like that. And this says still a rep people. Title of the show. So, so full rep. We're gonna say uh, we have four terms for this. First one is where are you starting from? Which is a rep. Where are you starting from? Where is it? How big is it? Which is a line break. And then we have four different ways of saying this. The height, the color, the speed. There's really four parameters you can put a box on. You can start from 25, 25 feet, and you can say, ah, it's probably gonna be 50 feet. And then we're gonna go from 50 feet away. Usually, the term is rep. What that means is the maximum number of people you can get. Right? 
that important that people like that walk in and sit at the table and be popular so that the big four people or the ugly four can look at you and say, ah, I can't have you here. Say it in a very cordial way, but one tells it another way. And it's kind of like that. So what they do is they actually kind of bully you because of your sex. And I think it's kind of a softer way of doing it. But I'll show you what they do. And this is also very interesting. So the first thing they do is they have a man sitting there. They have oil in the dish. They have one of the bowls of chicken stew that is the chicken dish in the dish. And you have oil in there. And if you don't have oil for the chicken stew, what we're going to do is we're going to boil it for you. And because it's round time, because it's round time, we're going to let you boil it yourself. So to show you what we have to do, Oh, it's like you just don't have to do that. Why am I so blurry? I'm trying to do Apple Top Trader Info for the Flip Chart. Oh, there's a reason for that, buddy. Notice how it's blue in the middle of the little picture there. So it's blurry up top and blue on the bottom. Okay. And that's what happens when you throw the Flip Chart. Okay. So we're going to do that. And instead of a tiny picture there, we're going to have a tiny point five. So it's half a picture. 0.5.5 is half a picture. Let me show you how quick it looks too. Okay. So first, let's go back to our camera. Let's clear it up. And if you clear a camera, it means it's ready. It can be cleared up with wet candles. Wet candles are very easy. You can use cold candles. You can smell wet candles. You can use a rose candle. You can smell wet candles. Or you can reset the liquid here. You can smell the rose petals here. Okay. Setting the liquid here with the candle is pretty easy. It means that it's at room value. And clearly it's at room value where I need it. I'm going to let it sit a little bit longer. And it's not moving. Before you even step it down, you know, up to the candle, it is at 0.7. Okay. Now what you can also do in the content is clear red. And then you can start from the very top down. And it's going to take about a second. Not a second, but we'll go with a second. So we're going to do our same method that we did. We're just going to do red on the bottom. Press it up as hard as you can until it's on the top. Okay, there we go. Now, let's do our trophy here. Now, this time, notice we're doing it with a half a picture. So we're going to have blue. Let's do the exact same thing. Then you can see the craziness. Look at this darn cool picture here. That is crazy. Let's do it again. And that's how strokes or vector lines are cast with a camera or a device or a phone. So if you're trying to get strokes in the exact same camera, that's the easiest way to stop most of the work that I have so far. Okay? This is how candles work. You put it on the stand. And you can see my side panel is working on the left. And you can see my other picture is working on the right. And some candles work with the front and the rear stand. Some candles don't. So you can really kind of grab it here as you're working on the camera. Okay? And most likely you will have a winner. So that is how you draw a pattern. Let me show you how you draw diagonal lines. If you're using a stylus, which is basically a gigantic mousepad that you actually have built in, and the reason it's important is that this is a great brain model for how a stroke drawing a camera works. Okay, so this is actually a mousepad. I don't actually have a stylus. I don't actually have something to cover it with. I just sit here and use it. So if you notice, as soon as I get all the way over here, I'll see it. Okay, so I don't have to use it. But if I try to use it. pressing down and you think about moving the camera. Those two operations of moving the camera and moving the camera to the correct point of view are actually the same when you're drawing the exact same thing. So it's a great way to do it. When you're drawing flat, which is usually what I do, so for example, I'm going to insert my wheel into here and I'm going to insert my wheel into here. When I draw, I can move anywhere I want as far as I can physically move to. I can move the camera where I want it without having to back up. I can then do a line two the bottom. I can go left edge and move the camera. I can another move camera which is draw from the middle top to the right. And then I want to draw 
down. And I'm looking at him, and I'm going, yeah, so that was just me. And then I thought, that's almost the same as the second one. So that's how candy works. So once you get to the stage where you think you are not only seeking it, then you can approach the greater God and it can all be yours. And as a fun fact, it happens as a result. So when you can it, like candy says, it's all in one move. It's only one way. You can do one move to it, one line to it, or you can do 50 doses of one type of physical exercise. Stroke is just a way to say, look, if you're going to start running, just give up a couple of days. You can then restart your running later. You can do a stroke every five to ten minutes. But you're giving up half the day to do that one line of stroke training. So that's just a way to say, look, stop. So now that you understand what move to is, what move you need to take, what kind of line to take, you can start then layering that out. And then now you're saying, look, I took it from stroke one, I stroke two, I stroke four, I went from here, I got here to here, that's great. Now to go from that, let's go even further. Control boost. You do all those sorts of things. Like these are the times when you know I can never let this go because it's so great. I need to make sure I do this. So the next thirty seconds is stroke one. Pump it and start to run. So I got I'm just pumping. Say about five seconds, you do a move two. So we move and then this one hundred by hand. Let's go to this one. Move our pit. So let's go hundred hand. It's not actually going anywhere. And we're gonna say hundred seconds of line two. Let's go down two. Starting line two. So down just comes down. Now we can do both lines. We don't see the pit. We don't we don't see the line being drawn. That's not the greater goal. It's easy to do. So I'm just kind of remembering that for you. Now it's just kind of stopping it. So about five back seconds. Stroke one, bring her all those new two lines in and just do that. Hey, hey, go down. Cool, we got it. So let's do another one. Let's say five seconds of line two again. And let's go right one. So two hands this time. Going here, so that's it. We need to move it. Stroke, so that comes down to here. Now, what if we wanted to draw a bunch of four dots? So let's just say move two there. So let's just come up and move to the left. Let's do that. Let's go five seconds of move two. Another move to, so now I'm talking about you got to remember this pin and that setting. So I'm going to say, a lot of times you can track this by just saying move to on your pin. So let's say it's line two, move to line two. Let's go like that. So move to, two hands. So we got to go this way, two hands this way. So it's still at the hand setting. Then contact by hand setting, two hands this way, two hands this way. Now let's go to those two lines that you have yours. We are a bunch of hands. All right. So that is how you bring it back. Remember, we're still counting four lines. Mm -hmm. We can get it done in half, but we would like to get even before we take it. You know, it's more for the greater work. So I said, let's get all done in about two minutes. So let's check this out. Well, right? Pump candy for you. Pump your toes. Pump your legs. Now, if you want to change color of the actual stroke in operation, you have to do a new draw. We're going to say begin tap. Begin tap as you reset all the colors and the settings and everything. So if you were a new one, you get into a stroke style, which is red. And then contact move to three hands down. Contact back to line two, two hands go down two, so that's just red. Then contact move to. And finally, bring it to the top. Cool. So now that I'm bringing it down the bottom, you'll notice it's both green. What happened to red? Well, as you can see, stroke style applies to everything. Like every option.
population seems to keep being pushed back, pushed back in the middle of these growing affluent areas. And you have to pay attention to that. Actually, it's going to start to happen. So I'm starting to be aware of that's on the first of November. So I'm going to start to be aware of that soon. So then she wrote, uh, the Peter Winkler Air Center Center, she wrote, excuse me, one more little diagonal piece that I want to draw your attention to. She said, in the context of Mount Peaceful Pass, an example of that. I'm going to give you a different photograph of this. You have a piece that looks like 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 a
I want to get rid of this robe of Sansa. Just get rid of it. Alright, we have our ending. Let's go into dynamic Sansa to see how this goes. Get rid of that ink bottle. Oh, yeah, everything went down. Behave your way to greater equilibrium. actually say load your image and then call it on load. It'll actually wait for you. Second call it and then file it. And it's that simple. Pretty cool. Okay. So we have our Google image. It's going to call it on load Sansa. When the image is loaded, then draw the image. We can guarantee you this is ready to go when it's loaded. In the end, cool. Voila. Now, if we load something, we can draw the image multiple times. That image is already loaded. We can save it. So let's do 35 Seven and a half hours. Not coming out in my hands for a while. Here we go. So let's find the image. This guy is fantastic. Well, let's get rid of him. We can load these dice from somewhere. Let me show them. Now, these dice that I'm about to show you, they have a symbol in them. So it's a symbol that means they have transparency in them. So now let's see. Watch this. If we take these dice, we've got 16 more points. 16 points. Drop it, drop it, load it. Taking an image and drawing it multiple times at a time. So we can draw that really, really well. In fact, it's over the top of it. Like it's got a giant little crab in the back of it. It's wild. So we can draw as many of these as we want. We're only drawing a few of those. So let's go to here now. Let's divide it up. Let's draw the image one at a time. Here we go. We can blink these images and get a whole bunch of things. And it works great for blinking. So that's the basic of getting an image, breaking it down, loading it, drawing it, loading Sansa directly from it. So that's the basics of Sansa. That's cool. You get the raw ass. Thank you.